Okay, so it's not allowing me to stream. Hmm. What happened to it now? Wow. Oh dear. It's like they went off again or what? I don't know. Sorry, but we're back again. Um, hopefully it gets better now. Uh, Elsie, it's good to have you up here. Um, please, um, Elsie, can you hear me? Okay. Um, let's let's get this up, guys. We're back, please. Um, you can share the screen. Let people know that we're back on this handle. Um. Hopefully our first one, I think I heard he's here right now. So please, please do not request the mic. 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 Please, guys, please. So let's let's get Peter up here. If Peter comes up, then everybody can request the mic. Um, then we cannot get this case from you. Please, thank you, guys. Francis, can you speak now? My handle is... We are really happy. I don't. I, I, I see this is from your network right now. I see this from your own network. Um, guys, why we try to bring up our principal here? Please, yeah, just be patient with us. Be patient with us. Um, I'm doing this. I think my principal is calling me. So please give me. One minute, let me answer him. I'll come back to you guys. Please, guys, share the screens. I'm coming.
just spoke with his excellency and he said he can see us, but I can't see him. So um, I went on his profile. He's, he's, it's not, he's not on his face. So he probably has to turn his phone off or things like this. Um, let, me, let me check it out. Yeah, it doesn't show he's, not, he's currently on any space. So you probably need to look at his Twitter account and log sign back in. Huh? Tumba, can you answer any request? Please. Oh, I cannot. Is he requesting? Please, sir, yeah, he says request. I told him to start to stream and probably um um update his app. He says he's next to Valentine. He's on the space. I've been listening to everything when he's speaking on the last space. And he's, he's almost frustrated, you know. But I don't want him. I don't want him to speak here through the call. But I want him to. Call. He's going to come up here live. So I told him to start his phone and um. Um, uh, update his app so he's going to join us any minute from now. So, but guys, please go off the peg of Elomox's Twitter and we just have to do it the way it is. But we're going to be here. Hopefully, he doesn't get too frustrated. But we are also waiting for him. So, anxiously, we're going to wait for him. Finger crossed, and we'll be back. Uh, Jimmy, you can come in. We're saying something for the last week's chat. Uh, um, uh, Sadam, please give me three minutes. I'll be back with you. But now, let me do this. Some people can see. If what I think what we can do is if I find who can see, I can have that person come as a phone and see. Perfectly. Yeah. Who, please, who so can see people here? Please. I think uh, Julian. Julian, can you see? Oh, he said he should just refresh so the shows is off. Okay. So. Uh, I can't even see David. David, you did. I, I, I saw David not so long ago. Why? Why? Please don't request me my chat, please. I saw David. I haven't seen David actually. I saw David. Let me let me bring David. I, yeah, I see David. I just sent David the mic. Yeah, I just sent David the mic. Yeah. Um, worst case scenario, I think you might have to get him someone else's handle. I don't. David, please, I sent you the mic to speak. Please, if you can see him, please, let, please come to my DM. Oh, David is back. Uh, David. Uh, Clarita, Clarita says you can see him, so uh, Clarita, 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 request the mic, please, so we can bring you up. Please, request the mic so we can bring you up. Okay, so do you need to request again? Yeah, just, yeah, request the mic, just to request, yes, sir. Okay. 
Please, if anybody can see N62, please just, um, Madam Clarita, I'll send you the mic, please, I'll send you the mic, please. Madam Clarita, can you, can you see him? I'm going through the request now. Um, okay. Please, guys, please, guys, please, guys, uh, please help us to help yourself. Please, uh, please, please, please. Right, can you see him now? No, I only see two requests. Um, let me let me go to his handle. So he's back. He's back on the stage. Uh, Sarah, Sarah can't see him. Sarah can't see me. Sarah says she can see him. So. Um, yeah, I see Sarah requested the mic. I don't know if that's. So um, Sarah is saying she can see the request. So let me drop down, let me drop down, bring Sarah back as a call, so then. Okay, yeah, you can drop me. So am I going to bring Sarah up? Sarah says she can see him. Just a question, I see him is back, just a question. Let me go on this, uh, Twitter, AD. Yeah, it's gonna be an amazing space. That's just what that's whatever it's packed like this. I know that's gonna be amazing. I'll try to bring Peter up when he comes up that we cannot allow people to request on the mic. Please be patient with us so that we don't end up um causing more glitches for the whole space, please. Thank you. Um Sarah, can you see him now? No, he's no more on the space. He's I think he's his he's his network. He has to connect to maybe Wi Fi. Okay, he's back on. He's back on. Let me quickly add him. Stop calling me now. The more you call me, Seth. Stop calling me, I beg. Who's calling me? Is he calling me? Someone is calling me. Who oh, is he calling me? Who oh, is he calling me? Not the person said that. He has gone back off, Saddam. I think he's his internet. He has to connect. Let me, let me text. Let me text Michael Jude on um, Wi-Fi for him to use. <coughs> I 
think of the things are nice. Or sometimes if there's someone that's close to him that you can use that person to shoot at him. I think we have no choice at this point. We live on the I can see him now. He's back. He's back. He's back. So I am trying. Well, then I'm gonna go back and come. I'm gonna go out and come back. But his back is on the space now. Yeah. Okay. Sarah, you can send him a mic without him requesting it. You know that, right? Yes, that's what I'm trying to do. He's on the space. He's here now. So far be it from me to suggest a conspiracy theory, but I've noticed that every single time PO is on a space or maybe there's a Zoom call or anything, his connection is always like this. And I know that it's not for lack of a good internet connection. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's just leave it at that. Has, AD probably has dedicated uh, internet uh, people watching. I've sent him a request. He addressed so many things, so yeah. <laughs> they, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. I think it's, I think it's well founded. I mean, they've, they've showed us time and over time they they go below the belt. I mean, if they can go to the extent of trying to of trying to hack it, like oh, yeah. <laughs> record yeah. his calls illegally, they like wiretapping him illegally and cloning his passport, then I don't think yeah. attacking the, the connection is too much of a stretch oh, because God. this is too much of a coincidence. Uh, this is like the sixth time that, that this is happening. I've sent him a request. He's you can't request. seriously tell me that. He's on the space. I've sent him a request. Sorry, David, go on, please. I don't, please, David, go on. No, I wasn't saying anything. I was just saying you, you can't tell me that, like, PO doesn't have good internet access. So that's clearly not what's going on here. So with, like when it happens once or twice, maybe it's a coincidence. But with this is like literally the sixth time. So I, I, you know, I mean, you know, most most of the time he's on the road. Like he's always moved, uh, moving. So I think that's the problem. No, but today's only God. You know, he has to stay today. He promised to stay one place today. He said, "Where are you going?" He's telling you, "Stay off this and you believe him." <laughs> today, 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 he promised us that he will stay one place. He tells you, "He will stay one so, place." You believe him. <laughs> <laughs> I want I I don't want to believe that he will just say one place. He promised us that today today that he's for he has us today. So it's just that for I've sent him a request and I'm trying to even invite him as a speaker, but I can't find. But he's on the space. I can see him here. <sighs> is there someone? Is there someone that can come on while you? If you have to talk to you, right? Okay, okay, please, yeah, yeah, please. <sighs> there is there someone that has a Twitter on the Let me speak to me. Yeah, sir, please do that, sir. Um, what I to see if you can request it through someone else's account. Please, guys, do not request yes. the mic, please. Oh, I think that's better. And he's right here, but I don't know. I, don't, I think it's his, I think it's his network or possibly his own, um, his own internet, his own Twitter. Uh, Sarah, can you see N6? I've not checked for N6. Let me check. I'm, let I can't me check see N6. for N6. I, I've been searching for N6. Uh, N6 is not. Uh, N6 just messaged me that he can see PO. He's here. I can yeah. see PO too. His PO is right here. Well, I don't know. Like, I've sent him a request. I've sent him the mic. I don't know what the problem is. He's on the space. So, I'm even like saying they don't spoof your own network. So, you <laughs> did. I don't you... suppose someone around PO could get him to host the space, could they? That also works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that could work. That could work. You can text him to... It's 
sorry, I'm just I'm trying to scroll through again. Now everybody has changed their names. I'm seeing like three thousands on this phone. <laughs> I can't see N6. N6 is not here. So, um, are you in Nigeria? That's a security question. You know that, right? Uh, I, like, so, the reason I was asking was because of the network. Like, yeah, in, in hindsight, that was a dumb question to ask. But, <laughs> but that's why I was asking. <laughs> I can't see N6 is not on the space, but PO is here. PO is on the space. I think I think the best we can do is let him post the space. I don't know. I agree. Possibly it is is from his end. It's his yeah, I mean, Twitter. It's, it's an it's, off or... I've, I've told him I've told him that option over. I told him to host the space. Um, oh. if you can host the space. Is, but he's saying let him see if he can. If it's not possible, um, oh, is, it, is there not, is there anyone next to him that has his Twitter account? Yeah, yes. Can you, see any, can, you see, can you see any requests now apart from one request? Yeah, there's, there's just one one request, one key can. Uh, let me see. No, 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 no. That was just one request, right? It's just one request. There's only one request on the space right now. Yes, it's it? only a ton. Yeah. It's on. And see if you can hear us, nobody can see on this space too. I have to say he can see you. So Okay, I've I've sent him a sticker invite now. Let him accept it. You're sent to Pio? Yes. Let him accept it. I've sent Pio a sticker invite. And I call that's going to be close to him. Let me call Michael Jude. Because on my small phone. I've sent Pio speaker invites. It's frustrating, the ball. I'm um, sending a speaker invite. This is the third time I'm sending him. I can see him here. I'm sending him speaker. Speaker invite. Let me see. Let's let's keep trying. I don't know. I don't know what to I've say. Sent him, I've sent him speaker invite. I've sent and he's on this space. He's here. He's right here. Why can't I see him? Can you can you screenshot? I your, can see him. Please okay. screenshot your screenshot your your listen. Let me see. I'll send okay. it to you. Please. Send you a screenshot. Saddam, I can't see him. Saddam, Otumba, and uh, Sarah, turn off your lo um, locations. Turn off your locations under Twitter. Turn off your locations and try again. Okay. My location is off. <laughs> so he's off. He's not referring to your GPS location. He's referring to the location in your Twitter section. Yeah. Yes, it's already it's on never. Okay, okay, good. And if someone else can, I, I'm not sure if there's someone with a PO who needs to turn up his location because the only way they can. And um, 
uh, go wherever I can. I I totally believe I I totally believe this is what it is. Go out, then go to his DM, then the, from the speaker invite, click on that speaker invite and join again. I think that's the best option. Go out of the space, because he's currently on the space. He needs to go out, then check his DMs for the speaker invite, and then click on that speaker invite and join, join the space again. This is crazy, honestly. Um, Jimmy, are you there now? Yep, I'm here. I think I think you give us some music break. Let us why we, oh. why 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 we wait for our, for our chairman? Of course, of course. Um, one minute. Let me let me get a playlist for you quick. This place go hot today. No, N6 is also not here. I, I still can't find him. Uh, sorry, have you done what Jim suggested with the blank, the blank space? Oh, I didn't know I was muted. I said, yes, that's what I'm even trying to do now. Sarah, I guess your your block list is preventing for people from getting on the space, Sarah. So <laughs> um Saddam, somebody said there's way you can send I don't know if it's possible if it's possible to send a co host to someone that's not on the space, so co host invites. I've never seen it, but somebody just sent yeah, it to my you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't, yeah, yeah. So, person has to be actively engaged with the space before you can. Um, yeah. I can. Um, uh, let me see. Just out of space. Uh, I can see M6. Twitter has gone to bankers. Otumba, check your, check your DM. I just want to just stop now on Twitter. Oh, no, what's up? All right, we'll do it. All right, let me drop off. Just, just check what's up. Let me drop off. All right, guys. Okay. Uh, I, want, I, want want start the, I want the, I want the hear people. Um, Saddam, when you're ready, just wave. I'll look at the, I'll look at the screen and just stop. Okay. All right. So.
the normal song, eh? Now I will remix it with this one. Jimmy. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Me, I, me, I hear, me, I, me, I hear our people for carry on with that one. Hmm? All right. Yes, um, hi guys. Sorry, Shadam. So I just spoke to I just spoke to him on WhatsApp, and MJ is going to, but Hoju is going to try on you. So I sent them a direct link. So also, Madam Aisha said she she has also been having that issue. Um, Aisha is so she said she's also trying to come on the space. So I've also sent her the link. So right now he's even speaking on Zoom. So he said I should also send to um, Michael Ju. So they'll try to use that speaker link and just join in directly. So let's see if that's going to work. So they have actually gone out of the space now. Now they're going to use that link. Okay, um, Jimmy, continue, please. Let me say, hey, wait a minute. I'm telling the youth that are here, it is your future that they are dying with. Have children, have kids, have two lovely children that are graduates. Somebody told me yesterday, just yesterday, he said to me, my friend said that we were going somewhere, and I was telling him I was going to run somewhere. He said he's going to bring that room for jobs. Peter, I can't do give him a job. Peter, I can't do this. The boy doesn't even have access. None of my children have to. I was the only person who is governor and bank chairman. Not to them. Nobody elected the one. They have to look for jobs. They have to do what they need to do. Hello. There we go. Yeah, Finally. 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 Jimmy, wait, wait, wait. The guest okay, already Okay, okay, thank you. All right, all right. 
good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to start the show from afresh. And with us in this in this beautiful state, uh, it is good to have it is good to have you here. Um, David, let me send you the mic. Let me send you the course mic. Please, L6, you can request the mic back. Um, Peter is here. So, guys, make some noise. Let the world know Peter is up and he is here on space with Nigerians. We had over twenty thousand people on the space the last time, and it. It's, we have to crash that space. To, sorry, I sir, can you hear us, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry for the frustration, sir. Thank you so much, David. Hello. Let me first start by most sincere. Listen to all of you. I wish it's something you can see me. I need to kneel down and I'm and everything. So I sincerely apologize. My name is for us just a, a, what I can call a sort of a family meeting to be able to reassure show everybody that we remain on course in this journey. This is what we've committed to. We're all committed that we must change the situation of our country. We all regret being part of this situation, very shameful situation we found ourselves today. In order to change it, we must remain on course. We must remain strong. I know how painful, how depressed most of you are. But if you check what we've been able to achieve in just a year, imagine what will happen if we remain on course for a few years. Right now, we're in the courts. The tribunal is going on well. I can predict what the outcome will be. But I'm very optimistic the outcome will be okay because even the judge and there are in trial, I just plead that all of us remain peaceful, law abiding, making sure that whatever we do, whatever we say, stays within the rule of law. What is allowed within the law? I assure you, in the end, the God that is seeing the pain and suffering of Nigerians will see us through. I'm very upbeat about that. I know how difficult it is for me personally and what I'm going through personally, but we must continue. I know most of you have questions and these, please, if there's anything you want me to clarify, please feel free. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure having you here on the platform. Um, I must say that uh, for the past couple of weeks, uh, obedience, your supporters that have carried this whole your message behind your back, that have done a whole lot of hard work for you, uh, for the movement for a new Nigeria, have been feeling let down um, by the system. The system has really it has crushed a whole lot of us and. We have, we have found, we have, we are, we are at that point whereby we have, we have been looking for a voice to listen to you, to hear you speak, and I think you came at the very right time. So our people are here, they want to ask you questions, and we want to make sure that everybody can talk to you, Nigerians can talk to you, your people can talk to you, your, and you, they can ask you questions as much as possible, but I, I, we cannot open the floor to everyone. Uh, so guys, if you're listening to us on the platform right now, you're welcome to the Power of Facts uh, space with Peter Obi. Please, if you have a question for him, just go straight to the comment section. Use the hashtag Peter will be on Parallel Facts. You have to use the hashtag, and we'll be reading your questions for those that we cannot bring up here. But we're going to try our best to bring up as many people as possible. And if you're up here, please 
keep your questions as short as possible. We are not going to allow any question beyond a minute so that we can take as many as possible. You all know how much people want to speak to him, how much people want to interact with him. Uh, we're going to give all our people a chance to speak and talk to the man today. So thank you, sir. It's, it's a pleasure sharing this platform with you. David, um, David, uh, my brother, thank you. N6, I cannot see you. Please request the mic. I don't know what to do any, anymore. I've done my best to try and bring you up here. So I'm going to, I'm going to yield the mic right now. <laughs> David, David, if you have a question for our guy, uh, you can start. If not, I think uh, we can start asking, allowing people come up here to ask him questions. I'll let him interact with the people. If not, um, David, I will yield the mic to you right now. Thank you. Um, so I would actually like to um, pass him across to the audience, so to speak, as quickly as possible. But um, I guess the the one, um, I don't know if you call it a question or a clarification that I would like to, to, to ask for the benefit of the audience is um, with regard to the status of the actual petition in court. And the reason I'm asking this question is that because of the news that emerged on Friday, the, the several, the flurry of judgments uh, across different courts regarding the, the purported swearing ceremony on Monday, there's several pieces of, of misinformation and disinformation swirling around, and there are a number of people who seem to be who seem to be under the impression that um, the judgments delivered last week somehow have some sort of a bearing on the subsisting issue at the presidential uh, election tribunal. So I just like Peter Obi himself to officially clarify. I'm not, um, I won't say what is up, uh, the actual position of the, what will be the outcome of our case filed in the tribunal remember that we have several issues which we're asking the tribunal to be able to deal with. Number one, David, being the issue of the constitutional interpretation of the 25% of SCT. It has a constitutional issue. And that is a critical one. The other has been some other issues, issue of what we're dealing with INEC, being able to show the infractions in the process. You know, that is, as we start going on with trial, which will commence on Tuesday, people will see what our case is hinged on. I would say what the decision of the court would be, because as is to present our case, the decision is there. And I believe that they're two on trial. It is not going to be easy, you know, but the judiciary itself is on trial in this process. All I'll say is that we're committed to it and we're going to be there. It's going to take a while, maybe, within the next one or two months. The problem people have is that all of us believe that after inauguration, it will be impossible to get justice. Yeah. But I always keep reminding people that I went through it for three years and somebody was in office. Eventually, I got justice. I went through it in course of my life. I've had to upturn and come back with three governors. I did it when I won an election in 2003 and stayed for three years. When I was impeached, somebody else took over as a governor. Again, I was able to upturn my impeachment which the court said was wrongly impeached and came back and they conducted the election and I went for tenor interpretation. Eventually, I was able, again able to come back from that situation. So for me, really, it is a case where 
All we need is let's go through it believing in the rule of law that the law will prevail, that we'll get justice. Even the end, the wise, we will all sit down as a family and decide the way forward. All I can assure you is that it, not at any time will I in this process or in this journey either compromise or be part of what is wrong. For me, the process is everything. The process through which people get everywhere it must be far more fundamental than what they do thereafter. So I'm committed to it, and I believe that all of us can stay in it. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. Um, I think I would just, I would like to follow up because many people come and they reach out to me and they say, uh, Saddam P.O. Uh, P. always say he, um, he has gotten justice before in the courts, but the courts then and the courts now are not, are not the same. You know, that they, they are different, but at the courts now, and I'm like, um, probably when you come on this platform, you can explain to the people to understand why if you had faith in the court then, when many people did not have faith in the court, and many people do not have faith now also in the court, why you still... Well, you know, you know, people think I only went to court when I was in politics. No, I've actually come, come to court as a private citizen. I sued federal government of Nigeria when they banned used vehicle in Nigeria. I sued the federal government of Nigeria because then I was a private citizen. And I sued them and I said, nobody who can afford new vehicle buys a used one. You cannot stop people from buying what they can afford. I sued the system, it was police, when they banned Molu in Lagos, it was on the same condition. I said, listen, you can't just see somebody who can afford Molu. Nobody, everybody wants an air condition vehicle. So unless we challenge that, we cannot say, as they have faith in judiciary. And if they fail, they are part of this system we're trying to change. Nobody's going to be free if anything goes wrong, and like it consumes everybody. We've seen everybody end up in IDT camp in various parts of the world, including the higher mighty. So it's not us. What we're saying here is that we want to make the system better. Today, everybody is unsafe in the country. I was struggling to have you, sir. Yes, I'm here. So for me, let's go through it. The judiciary might seem to have changed, but I still believe in it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, before I go on, please, I just want to make a, a passionate plea. Please, if you're on the comments, if you can see uh, my co-host, end seats. David, please, help me check if you can see end seats, please. It will be a pleasure to bring up every end seats here. If you can see end seats on the... On the, uh, if you're on the space and you can see NCs, please let me know. Um, just hit me up on the comment section so I can bring you up to bring him up here. All right, uh, please let's open up the space for Nigerians to interact with our presidential candidates. Guys, please receive the space. Let people know that Peter Obi is live on the Parallel Facts right now. And you can use the hashtag Peter Obi on Parallel Facts to ask questions because. And that is the only way we can read questions. We have close to 3,000 comments on the comment section, and I cannot read all these questions. So it's important that we get you guys using the hashtag. Please, guys, thank you. All right, let's take the first speaker for the day. Um, if you're up here also and want to ask questions, please, your hands should be up uh, so we can take a queue. If not, we have to drop and bring other people up. Thank you. All right, yeah. um, Madam Mary White, you have the space, please. Um, okay, Jimmy, sorry, please. Let's, uh, yeah. right, let's, let's take, Jimmy, let's take the lady, then I'll come to you, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jill. All right, um, may you watch out the space in a minute. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Um, it's good to um, talk to you today. Uh, my question is, um, sir, your your energy level, your worker level is next to none. 
So my question to you, what I mean is that today you're in London. The same day, it's likely you'll be in Nasrawa, and the other day you are in another state, and you still maintain this high energy. And as a young person, to me, I'll be honest to you, I'm kind of envious. So for me is, what is your secret? And before we, we, you can answer the question, I have a bigger fan here in the name of my mom who just wants to say hi for a few seconds. Hello, good afternoon, Your Excellency. Mr. Good afternoon, Mom. I am a concerned Nigerian, and I am 100% obedient. Thank you, we, Mom. We, the people, are solidly behind you. Thank you, and Mom. And we pray that God will help us reclaim our mandate. Well, Mom, we're committed to it, and I'm sure God that is seeing the pain and the suffering of people in this day to help us to stop this criminality that our nation is going to today. Victory is and I'm ours. Sure it will happen. Yes, and I say victory is ours. Nigeria Thank is you, our country. Nigeria is our country, and Nigeria must survive. It Long must. Live the obedience. Long live Thank the you. obedience. Long Thank live you, Mr. President. My president. Thank you. Thank you. The Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. My sister, there's no, I don't have any other energy that's better than you have. All I do is that we must be able to fight this. And I can tell you, it is the, the energy in you, the obedience that I committed in what we're doing. For me, like I keep saying, my desperation is to see Nigeria work, not to be the president, but to see it work. And I know it can work. We can have this pool of talented, committed people and allow criminals to hijack the process. Look at the work we are going through. Look at the waste. If you see the struggle now to be anything, look at the amount of money we wasted going to election, spending over one billion dollars to conduct an election that nobody will in any way assess as one. Look at even the cancelled. Um, so-called the census, we haven't even started. We spend the fortune before we can. So we can't go on like this. Where people are taking, the only thing that thrives in this country today is criminality. And they can't continue. So I'm pleading for all of us to stay on course. It's you that is giving me the energy your support, your belief in this movement that is giving me the energy. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, let's, Jimmy can come in now with your question. Right. Um, good day, Your Excellency. I don't really have any question. I just want to say uh, one or two things. I, I just want to express my sincere gratitude and to let you know, right, that um, we, the obedient, we are right behind you total support mm -hmm. but this thank is, you this is the warning i actually want to pass to you sir please eat well mm -hmm. morning afternoon and night don't break anyone don't say you want to fast eat well we don't want a malnourished president we don't want you staggering when you want to take no. a walk. Thank eat you very much. well thank take you. your vacation Stay healthy. We need a healthy president. We don't want a shaky Thank president. Please. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And, sir, please, I beg, do not apologize on our behalf again, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't. Well, you don't, know, we are dealing, without due respect, one minute. We are dealing with demons. We will handle them. Eh? Let us handle. You do your own political thing. Don't worry. Do the whole briefcase thing. Shake them. Talk to them. We go handle them. Mm? 
iron sharpens iron, we go handle them. Don't worry, there is politics. We will handle them. Let me let me plead on that one. Let me plead on that one. Let me plead on it. All right. You know, right. we're trying to change the system. You know, when people said I apologize, they, they mentioned that the other people don't apologize. What I was plead with you is to know that we're trying to change the system and we must believe that when we're wrong, we will say we're wrong. When we do things that are not right, we'll, uh, so apologize is the part of that new Nigeria we want to build. Being respectful is part of it. Being this is the part of it. We, are, we can disagree with our fathers. There's nothing wrong in that. But when we do, we will still apologize for them. Even if they're wrong, we still apologize for them because they're fathers. There's a lot of respect and everything. And I can assure you, we'll go on doing that. It's not going to change. And I'm not saying, I know what your business, I know what all of us are going through. Nobody has seen me defend it. I believe that you're the right cause because Nobody can go through what people are going through in Nigeria today. You'll be lucky if you remain sane. It's enough to drive anybody to insanity. You know, where you live, where you see people who are supposed to manage the assets of the country, turn themselves into robbers and everything. So there's no way. We've done what we need to do. We must do the right thing. Sir. The country must survive. Okay, sir. So if you want to apologize, you can apologize on your own behalf. See obedience, eh? You okay. No, okay. Give and leave us because if you say no, what no, I take, I take that. Uh -huh. Apologize, so, apologize will be on my behalf. On behalf, not on, your, on behalf of the uh -huh. family, will be on behalf of. Just strictly, uh -huh. Mr. Peter, will be. Because if the family is not included. If it's on the album, you go apologize, Taya. If you do this one here, I go whip another one, right? You go just apologize. They go. So, on behalf of you, you don't apologize, no problem. You don't do apologize. Forward. <laughs> Thank Move you. forward, guys, please. Don't come here and ask um, any questions about the ongoing court case. Please do not do that because. Um, it's still in court. We don't want a situation whereby you'll be uh, uh, speaking about what is not actually meant to be spoken of. So please keep your question very simple, short, and forward. Thank you very much. Back to you now, Saddam. Thank you. Thank you very much, my brother Jimmy. Thank you, sir. And that's just um, the, that's just one part of the of the movement you have not been with, you have not spoken to. So you see that, and I think it speaks for majority of us. Please. Um, just going forward, I'm happy that you they came up here and say we can only speak for Mr. Peter Obi and obedient movement are on our own. We're fighting this fight on our own because we we, are, we ran for these elections using me. So please, you should so I've, I've always said that. And I've always said before, even when I was campaigning, you know, you see where David will say something, they'll say, ah, David is this. I say, listen, David is on his own. He's even this. They say, I shall this. I said, these people even disagrees with me. And that is the new family we want to build, where people can assert themselves and say, you're wrong, you know, because I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm not consistently wrong, and I apologize where I am. But I want us to build a family where we can be together, Believe, even when we're talking about new Nigeria, Peter's, people say, oh, Peter B can do it. I said, no one person can do it. I won't do it alone. If we had succeeded, we would have sat down and bring the best people on board. And all of us will go into it and try to change it. I didn't find anybody wanting. We wouldn't even take one second to throw the person overboard and move on with another new person because this must work. Thank you very I much. I work in a system where I've always had people challenge me. In my eight years of being governor, go ask any commissioner who work with me. They all very sit very close to me. They all disagree with me. You know, people will walk into my office and say, How can your commissioner be talking like this? 
you know, asked him to do something. He said that I'm coming from the governor. He said he doesn't know who is the governor. I said because he's the commissioner. We are all co-partners in this struggle. All I assure you is that you will not find me wanting. My style, my idea to be a little bit weak and everything. And I always tell people, um, humility is not weakness. It is a virtue. There's nothing wrong in saying I'm sorry. And I'll continue to say I'm sorry. But we'll get there. As long as I don't do what is wrong or offend the family, I have to add a bit of my own style. And I allow other people to do theirs as well. And if there's a place where we need to sit down and discuss, we'll discuss as a family. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, let's take more convers uh, more people in the conversation right now. Guys, if you want to ask questions, I'll be taking uh, questions from the comment sections and using the hashtag Peter Obi on Parallel Facts. Uh, that's the hashtag we're trending today, and that's what we'll be asking questions from. So please, if you ask any questions, use the hashtag beneath uh, behind it. If not, I won't be able to read your questions. So please, very important to use the hashtag Peter Obi on Parallel Facts. Thank you, guys. All of you on the platform right now, you can retweet the space, you can share the space. Let people know that the pre our yeah, president, our about. president is up here and is speaking. So I'm going to take the next uh, question. Uh, let's take um, let's take a lady right now, Madam Clarita. You've been here for long, so I'm going to give you a minute to ask your question. Thank you very much. You have a minute now. Thank you, Amir Saddam. Um, good evening, sir. It's a pleasure to have you um, on the space, and it's uh, it's crazy to see the number of people who have joined the space. Um, I'm going to keep my questions um, short. I have two questions. Um, the first question is, following the unfortunate um, outcome of the presidential election, we have seen um, some Western governments who are, you know, supposed to uphold democracy, validating um, the unconstitutional outcome of this election. Um, how does that make you feel? And my second question is, you know, your decision to run under the Labour Party, you know, inspired a lot of young people um, to take the bold step into politics, you know, myself included. I um, contested for the House of Reps um, seat for Oguja Yala Federal Constituency, and it was my first time, yeah, contesting for any electoral office. Yeah, but it was, it was a very unpleasant experience, you know, to watch the very flawed electoral process, you know, especially as a young woman. Um, it was very dem demoralizing. And I just wanted to ask if you have any words of advice, because I believe I My sister. Yes, a lot of Don't be people. demoralized. Don't be demoralized. Once we finish this uh, court session, I'm going to start moving around and touring where I'll have opportunity to meet people like you. You know, this year, everything went into a rush. Don't be demoralized. Change is a very difficult thing because we're trying to bring a change. Remember when you bring a, you try to bring a change, you have for enemy, all those who live of the old order. Even those you're trying to better their lives because they're not sure whether you succeed on the fence. So bringing a change is a very difficult thing. I've been in this process. I contested the election in Anambra State after hard three years of campaign, spending a fortune of my own resources. I was in court for three years. I used to come to court even alone. Nobody is going to be there with me. And then, of course, six months into it, I was impeached for doing the right thing. It was for doing the right thing. If I give you one number one item where I was impeached was because my own office as governor the budget to refurbish it, budget, approved budget, from the, my predecessor was 292 million naira. And I spent only for the 3 million renovating it. And the house, the cause of it to benefit for me, said I didn't go through the due process. And that was my number one for being impeached. Number two item, and that's where I was up, was the same thing. They had a budget of 481 million, 86 million naira. 
to refurbish, to rebuild and refurbish the governor's lodge, which is my own lodge, where I'm supposed to live. I did everything with 81 million now. And on these two items, I was impeached for doing the wrong thing. When, in fact, when the court, when I presented my case in the court, everybody was, so if you're going through this, it is a difficult, painful thing. But it's not gonna be easy. It's going to be difficult. Look at what is happening today, where people stay four years in office and leave office, then they will build a house for them in the capital, build a house for them in Abuja, build a house for them in their village. So they, so if I'm governor of Anambra State, they'll build a house for me in Oka, build it in my, in my village, build this for me in Abuja, you know, and pay me where they change my cars every two years or every three years. So what I said to people, the Anam brother have not bought me a bottle of Coke since I left. People are saying, you're crazy. You're useless. You're this. You know, at times, even your family members are questioning, what are, what are you doing? Are you the only human being? So it is difficult. But remember, we uh, believe that we must change this because we're on the right course. Otherwise, we'll consume everybody. So please do not be deterred, do not be demoralized. I know you've spent your time, your energy, your resources. It is difficult, but don't go away. All right, thank you very much. Sir. I think um, I'm having a glitch trying to unmute my mic. So uh, let's go on. Uh, Mr. Benjamin, you have the space, please, in a minute, please. Guys, and let's keep our questions just one, please. We have plenty of people that want to ask questions, so let's just drop one question, frame your mic to ask a question, and ask a question, and we can keep the conversation rolling. Thank you, Mr. Benjamin. Have the minute, please. Thank you. Thank you, Your, host, your Excellency, my President elect. Mr. Peter will be, this is Benjamin Mayor Emidan. I want to say thank you for the opportunity thank to you. be part of this great program today. And I don't have any question for you, sir. If I'm asking you questions, that's if I don't know what is going on in the Obede movement. I just want to come here and give you that accolade that you deserve. Do not forget, one year and a day, making it today, the day you left PDP and we all um, followed you to Labour Party. And since that one year, you have given birth to children, you are giving birth to people in politics, which we normally refer to as new breed. And we hope in the nearest future, this will be part of the change, the agent of change that you have created. And I just want you to know is that the journey that you are embarking on, you are not on it alone. We all started all, all this together. We are with you till the end. Thank Do you. not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Anything, anyhow, we did. You know, you didn't send a letter to us to come and ask us to join you. We join your movement voluntarily because we know Thank that you. is the only way we can save this country. So Thank anybody you. telling us we can't do it, we can do it. We believe in you. We have thrown you up and down. We said you there is no single of corruption traced back to you while you were in government, even as a private citizen. This is one of the most important things that we need in a politician that will become the president of a country. That's the reason why most of us who also have that part, who have that mind to say this is what we can do and beat hand on our chest. That's the reason why we are supporting you, sir. Like I said, I have no question. Be rest assured, you. take I'm, your medication, eat your food, you are healthy. Thank you very much. But and I also plead with all of you, if there's anything you think I'm not doing right, please feel free to tell me. Know that I'm a human being. I make my own mistakes and everything. There might be things that I've done in the past or I'm doing that is not right. You know, please tell me if it's something that I need to explain, I'll explain my reason for doing it and all that. And all. all I assure people is that I will not know you. I'm one person who has sworn with my life and my children that I will never know you. Know you. Yes, no, yes. yes, Your Excellency. Do anything we have, that is wrong. Yes, Your Excellency. We, we, we have so it. We have me, it. 
please don't be advising me from. We must be a family that advises each other, tell each yes, other sir. when you're wrong. Especially, yes, I want to hear bad news always. <laughs> so, so we don't have bad news. We have what it calls violent space. There, we'll be able to criticize ourselves and correct ourselves. That is what we're doing Thank there, sir. So if you have done anything wrong, just like what my brother said, Jimmy, we said stop apologizing on our behalf because we have this thing skin that we put on anything that comes on social media with the chest and nothing that happen. All of us be here. So anything yeah. that has to do, whether you are doing well, whether you are not doing well, we always have a way to communicate with you, sir. The people on Thank that violent space will not they say because he is preferential will give me a preferential treatment. We are looking for a way to repair Nigerian. That is what you have started. You cannot go away from it. And that is what we are all doing. We tell people to the face, this is what you have done and this is wrong. Sir. So as of the moment, I can tell you categorically, you have not done anything wrong so far. You only apologize on our behalf as a father that you are. We can understand that. But there are some people that does not deserve your apology. Thank you. I rest my case, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Saddam, real quick, before you go ahead, sir, let me use this opportunity to let you know about Parallel Facts. Um, it was um, born out of this movement. It is a platform that uh, you can use it as a reference to um, good and factual news, the real news, because now we have different, you know, kinds of uh, media being controlled by the NBC. They tell them to do this, to do not to do this, to say this and not to say that. And uh, Parallel Facts is just going to be giving us the news, the way, for example, if they say, Tinubu peace for body, now so it be. It won't be like, oh, the president had a water spilled on it. No, he peace for body, now so it will be. So, sir, watch out for parallel facts. You can follow it. Um, it's a place you can refer to as a source of facts, good news. It is what it is. If they're not sugarcoating it, they tell you the way it is. It might come late, but it's true. Thank you so much. Back to you now, Sadam. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Um, the, <laughs> ah, God have mercy. Thank you, sir, for joining us. I think let me just introduce um my co-host, uh, one of us that is here, and to, to bring him up here has been a, has been another attack on himself. As in to bring you up here, else is more difficult than bringing people here. I don't understand what whether you are also running for presidency or you ran for presidency, but you're here right now. Um, please let's uh, keep the conversation rolling, guys. In question each. For a min uh, uh, for one minute per question, let us ha we have we have hundreds of, of requests and over four thousand questions down there in the comment section. So I don't know how you guys are going to do, but so you're going to be here for a very long time because obedience really want to speak with you. We want to hear you speak. Many people are banking on hearing you speak uh, as a source of hope for them. I think I'll yield the mic right now to N six. N six, you are coming right now. Then I'll come back to our speakers. Thank you. N6, are you there? All right. Um, I think N6 is struggling with his network still. Hmm. Let's take a let's take a lady. Let's take a lady. Then I'll come back. Uh, we'll come to you, N6, if you're ready. All right, Mumbola, you've been here for long, so we have the space in a minute, please. Um. Good. Good evening, Your Excellency. Thank you good for joining evening, us sir. here. Right. So initially I was going to ask a question, but then, you know, I know you're a man of faith. You know, you have described your journey as being one of the grace with the grace of God and a miracle in itself. And so I was listening out to the Holy Spirit and, it, you know, it came to me that I needed to read out Psalm 91 because I know that you're not telling Very us. All your grace. It is indeed. I am reading Very the Amplified. I am reading the Amplified Version, um, and it speaks to the security of the one who trusts in the Lord. It yes. says, verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty. For his power, no enemy can withstand. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, with confidence and on whom I rely. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wings, you will find <laughs> refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. You will not be afraid of the terror of night, 
nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction, sudden death that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. You will only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High because you have made the Lord who is your refuge and my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, sir, nor will any plague come near your tent for he will command his angels in regards to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. I'll say that again, to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. They will lift you up in their hand so that you do not even strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you will trample on the foot because he has set his love on you. Therefore, he will save you. You, you, he, I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. He will set you securely on high, sir, because he knows your name. He confidently trusts and relies on God, knowing you will never abandon him, no ever. He will, you will call upon God and he will answer you. He will be with him in trouble. He will be with you in trouble. He will rescue you and honor you. With a long life, will he satisfy you? And he will let you see his salvation. Amen. Thank you, sir. That was all I wanted to share. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. When you said, I said a very strong psalm. And I assure you, we're all here by his grace. It is by his grace. That's why I said that those who abuse power are abusing grace of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you very much, sir. That, that was what is that was a wonderful prayer there. Okay, let's keep the conversation rolling. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe, obedient, you have the space in a minute, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Good good day, Your Excellency. Good evening. Um, it's a honor speaking to you. Happy one year anniversary in Labour Party. You have done the unthinkable, the nearly impossible. Um, I'll be very quick. My first, my first thing to say is, please, I don't know if it's safe for you to do it, but please open more exposure for us, like you did with the oil test. I'm sure you have a lot of other information for things going wrong in Nigeria and economy. More expose is like you did with the oil test, the level of oil test. There is a lot happening in Nigerian economy that we don't know. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I am asking that you should please help us with more exposés, informations you have about things going wrong in the economy that we general masses don't have access to or don't know about, or we have been we have been um, ignorant about because um, that was a very very it seemed very small at the beginning, but it was it was very deep and it exposed no, a lot. No, definitely. Yeah. You know, I say it every day that it's a criminalized system. You know. And that is why you see us politicians juggling and paying any amount of money for position, doing all sorts of things, killing and maiming people, doing all sorts of things. So if it is going to work, the level of aggression, if expenditure and everything would drastically reduce. And that is why we must have a process that is transparent. Because once that starts, that will be begin or build in a new Nigeria that will solve this problem. All these problems we're going through. So thank you. I'll continue in that direction. Now it's like I'm focused on this trial. When it's true, either way, we'll continue. 
All right, thank you very much, sir. Um, let's take a lady right now. I uh, will be skipping it. One guy, one lady. And um, next, uh, so I'm bringing up someone that I will describe as one of your top soldiers on social media. She she goes, uh, what I mean, literal war. She goes to war, uh, defending you on her own against a whole lot of <laughs> enemies that come after you. So, and and yesterday was her birthday. So I promised her that we're going to wish her happy birthday. And she's here. Oh, you would have given me. I wish you can even send me a, a number and everything so that I can send it personally to her, but... Uh, let, let her speak. Let her speak. So, over me, you, you can wish her happy birthday to her, to her directly. Thank you, sir. Uh, Distinguish, uh, Oluchi, you have the space. Good evening. Good evening, sir. <laughs> my name is Oluchi. Good evening, my sister. <laughs> and I'm dialing in from uh, the United States. I'm a big fan. Um, this um, I don't even know what to say right now. Like I'm so excited talking to you. I I've been telling everyone in the timeline like I'm definitely gonna pass out if I say hello to you. But um, <laughs> it's such an honor being here talking to you. And I've never had to speak Thank to you. any leader in Nigeria. You don't understand what you're doing for us right now. We love you, Peter Obi, and we we're solidly behind you wherever you go, you, whatever you want, whatever it is. Just let us know. We love you. Now, I just have one question, and this is concerning the incident that happened at the UK airport. Um, I have been worried about that incident, especially the fact that it happened after Festus Kayamo said that they're going to match Labour Party um, propaganda to propaganda, and then suddenly someone we had the news that someone cloned your identity. So my question is, how are you handling that incident? And how would you prevent that from happening? Is the UK government cooperating with you to make sure that this does not repeat? Is there someone in custody? Is there any form of uh, case going on? I I'm just so curious about this, sir. Let me first, let me, um, on behalf of the Obedian family, most sincerely, Congratulate you on your birthday. I know it was yesterday, but uh, we're still on the evil month. So our sincere congratulations. May God Almighty, who have been with you, bless you all this while, grant you many more healthy, fruitful, and happy years. Thank you, sir. And continue to bless you always. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It means a lot to me. Thank you. So, so what happened, um, my sister was um, very surprising to me. I've been to the UK this year at least four times. When I went to Chatham House, when I went there, when I was, when I was invited by the UK government, when I was, went to America, when I was, because before the elections, I was invited at the State House on Christmas. So I always pass through the UK. So it was a surprising thing to me to appear before. I've lived there, of course, for years. Still own a property there, because that's where I lived before I became governor. And for me to appear at the airport and you were asked to sit down, I was surprised. But all this happened within a few minutes I must say that they, it was I was happy about it. Because if I did, there's so many dramas that happened in that trip that I can't tell um, because we are conversation in the phone, but I can tell you a very shocking thing when somebody now appears and shows you that your identity is duplicated. My first reaction is to say, well, it means nothing until I was referred to an expert on identity duplication who shocked me. You know, in my initial reaction is, this is nonsense, it doesn't mean anything to me. But when I told a colleague and a friend of mine in the UK, he said, I'm going to refer you to identity duplication expert. And I went to see, after an hour, 20 minutes meeting, I came out shocked. Because 
I used to travel, of course. First, he told me, he said, Peter, listen. This is what, I don't want to call it, cost of country that I use it to track people. He said, Peter, you could be complicated for sort of a rent. Because simple, you book a hotel, they book the same hotel. They have their own gang who comes in there. You're in that hotel, set you up. At night, somebody says, oh, you did this, you did this. And they call police. In the UK, everywhere in the Western world, this is a serious case that you can't get a bail for. Could be killed in murder because it's your duplicate. And because it's your identity, you checked in this same hotel. They use it to check into the same hotel. Same thing goes if they are checked in any luggage. The same thing, you know, it went on and on and on. But thank God, nothing happened. I'm managing it, you know, I've been to the UK since then. And um, while they, they too are investigating, we hope when I arrived at, after that, I was asked what went wrong. I explained to them where well, they found out it's duplicated. They said they are looking into it. That's all I can say for now. I'm also very careful, extremely careful. I'm managing it. I'm hoping nothing goes wrong. But it all started from here. That's all I can tell you. It's something that started from Nigeria. And I'm, I'm being careful about it. Thank you very much, sir. Um, it's, it's insane what you've been through um, in the course of this movement. And I, I, I for myself, I tell a whole lot of people that ask me and that get to agitate. understand that this man himself is passing through a whole lot himself and with the grace you used to take all what you're passing through is something that's worth emulating so thank you very much for that sir just please just make sure that you're always picking up because one thing i want you to i want to assure you here is that you have the people do not forget that's what you should understand you do not ever have something that you keep quiet you have the people behind you strictly behind you so please always speak out the people, the, sit, the office of the citizens are ready to always stand up for you. Please, where you feel you have to speak up, speak up. Thank you very much. I will. I'm sorry. We will even get worse. I'll yeah, go I, will be, I, will, I will be here to fight for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me bring in um uh, my co-host. N6 have been here for the longest. So N6, if you, I don't know if your audio is good now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good evening, sir. Um, good I might evening. start this... I, I, I might start asking you questions from the most basic angles because I really want us to start somewhere and head somewhere so that that way we don't discuss tribunal in one question, then the next question we are discussing something totally different. Please, sir. Currently, the, the, the president select of Ireland, we cannot even verify his real name. So I might ask you one of the funniest questions, but please, let's start at the very beginning. Excuse me, sir. What is your name? Where are you from? Who is your father? How many siblings did your father give birth to? How many children do you have? Who is your wife? Just basic standard information that currently as we speak, we cannot even swear that the person in Astro Rock can give this information accurately. So let's just start at the most basic. Who is Peter Obi from beginning? Introduce yourself to us, sir. Well, like we've met. Very, very simple. My name is Peter Gregory. I have, an, I have a, a, what I can call a local name, which I deliberately, deliberately, uh, people will always ask me, why even my own children? Dad, why did you leave this off? And I said to them, I don't know why my father gave me that name. Because, you know, Peter, they say is rock. Then my father gave me an Igbo name that says, Ongopase. What it means that you can't die. So I said, what a combination. So let me remove this. 
because I must die one day. Why should you say you can't die? You know? So that's, I don't have sight, but there. But that is Peter Gregory Obi I was born in July 19th, 1961. So I was born after the independence. I always and we can go and verify this. Yeah, but, but of course. God bless you, sir. Of course. Continue. If, there, if there's any mistake, it's from my mother. In which, in which not for me. In which uh, I was born in what a side hospital in Ornicha. It's just everybody knows what the side hospital in Ornicha, where I was born. And I, I started my primary school in Holy Trinity Primary School, went to Santa Maria in Onicha, and then went to St. Augustine, Omoaban. I was in three primary schools. The reason being that I have an, had an auntie who was teaching, you know, and my auntie is fond of me. So when she's wherever she's transferred, she wants to go with me. And of course, I was born in a family of 10. I'm gonna have 10 children, 10 of us. You know, so we're quite a number. You know, my parents lived in Onicha. If you live in a town called Onicha, everybody knows the supermarket they call Aldil So. Supermarket, 75 New Market Road. That's my father's business, the oldest supermarket in, uh, I'll call it store in Onitra, where my father used to trade in the 60s. Everybody knows him. That building is still there, it's where they have 75 New Market Road. They have now Mr. Big there, because of course, he's in years, of course. My mother is a baker and a trader. So I went to this primary school that I mentioned. I went to Christ the King College. Anybody who went to CKC in Onicha knows me very well because I passed where I was deputy discipline prefect before I left school, played for the junior football, at least in one or two matches. So I'm well known in the CKC. From there, I went to the University of Nigeria, Suka, from 1980 to 84. There's nobody who passed through Suka who will tell you he doesn't know. What am I, I'm not saying that, I'm not claiming that everybody knows me, but most people know me because everybody knows who I was as a student, University of Nigeria, Suka. Since then, so if you go there, they will tell you where. In fact, the current vice chancellor is my mate. We came in the same time, left the same time. The current BBC, the two deputy vice chancellors are all my mates. We came in the same year and left the same year. If you ask any of them, they will tell you, ah, we are all the same family. Since then, I've been to other institutions for training, you know, maybe a few months and everything, some of which I'm an alumnus of, like Cambridge, Oxford. I'm a Kellogg scholar because I've done about four or five programs in Kellogg graduate school. So when you do more than three, uh, call it uh, seminars, you become a scholar. So I'm a Kellogg scholar. I've been to other ones which are not as much, like Harvard, Columbia, I'm a London School of Economics. I'm a alumnus of IMD in Switzerland, Institute of Management Development in Switzerland. I've been to um, INSEAD in France. So these are institutions of, and they're all recorded. If you go there, they, if you say, oh, has this man passed? If you look at my CV, you see what I, the training or seminar went there, it's recorded, you can go and verify them, all that. 
And of course, basically, I'm a trader. So then my trading life in Onitra. And if you come to Onitra, I still live in Onitra. I'm speaking from you from Onitra. Everybody knows it's the only place I can live in Nigeria. It's the only place I own a house that is my own. Built Butland, built it in my own and live there and everything. And that's where I'm speaking to you from now. You come to Onita. I tell people you're looking for Peter, they will tell you. Started my business, went into the corporate world where I sat in different companies as director. At a particular time, I was the youngest direct chairman of a bank in Nigeria. And I think it's still the same case. I was chairman of a bank at 38, 39, Fidelity Bank. At that time, I was also a director in two other banks, Canadian Express Bank. I was a director in about eight companies, out of which about six of them are quoted. I've been the chairman of Security and Exchange Commission. And of course, as governor of Anambra State for eight years, where I can tell anybody while I was governor, my commitment was an issue that has to do with development of a society, education, health, and pulling people out of poverty per capita. In education, you can go and verify. Anambra was number one. In health, you can go and verify. In pulling people out of poverty, you can go and ask Mr. Paco or Sam Sudin that was Minister of Finance then, ask them who is number one in fighting poverty while we were there. Overall, we won, we won the MDG, Millennium Development Goal, as the best performing state in Federal Republic of Nigeria, that started in the year 2000 and ended in year 2016. I became governor in 2006, was impeached, came back in 2007. We started in 2008, but by the time it was concluded in 2015, Anambra was number one. I was even chosen by federal government of Nigeria and the United Nations office in Nigeria to speak at the UN, UN gathering to say our experience. I left in 2014 and I've always said consistently, the day I left office, I did not owe salary to anybody, pension, gratuity, all that were being owed before I came into office, gratuity and pension, especially at local government level, totaling over 35 billion were cleared. I did not owe one contractor, one supplier, and this you can go and verify. And I had in three banks, Fidelity Bank, we have 12 billion naira, left $50 million. Assets Bank of Nigeria, $12 billion, $50 million. Diamond Bank of Nigeria, then Diamond Bank, $50 million, $12 billion. The three MDs are still living, the banks are still there, and they, I can show you the statements and everything. And since I left, there's no severance, no pension, nothing to me as a governor. I have never earned a, an umbra has never bought me a bottle of Coke. This is my 10th year of living office. Because I refuse to sign the Anambra governor's pension law. Because I believe, I think it is wrong that somebody will stay four years, eight years, and be paid 200 times what people who have spent their lifetime of 35 years 
cannot end in their lifetime. Even when you had the best as governor, you're managing the resources of the state. So if you want to steal, you can steal as all those monies I'm saying are left can could have actually have been I could have stolen all of them and even borrow more. Could have taken it away. Nobody asked me. I remember my late senior sister, Dora Akunyel, always asked me, Peter, why are you putting money in dollar? I said, well, listen, I'm just etching that what I did is that I divided the money into three, one in Naira, then one I'm using to buy shares, the other I'm keeping foreign currency just in case. He said, so why are you doing that? I said, well, listen, Auntie, every system saves. That is what I was brought up and taught in everywhere I've been. You must save for tomorrow. Because this money we are sharing and eating is not only for this generation, it's meant for also for future generation. This all you we are sharing from is a diminishing asset. One day you must finish. So we must save for tomorrow. So well, I, I, sorry, sir. I, I listened to everything you say. And my major question remains, a nation that owes 77 trillion naira, about, uh, you know, double digit unemployment rates, you know, even look at how the election ran. Why are you interested in leading Nigeria? Just in, in, in one minute. Sir. And why are you, I mean, with all this stress, sir, I would have, packed my bags and gone to London and taken a holiday. Why are you disinterested in helping well, Nigeria? Well, well, for me, for me, it is, thank you very much for that question. Because you know that what is happening can change. You know you can change. You know it, it can be better. You know, when, where will you want to see a situation that can be better. And you will not want it to be better because you can sacrifice for it and make it better because let me use the instance of what we're going through today. Essentially, um, I was speaking to somebody. I was in Kaduna, I'm sure you must have seen it in the news just uh, yesterday, I was in Kaduna. And I said somebody, Women argued for about years, about 2015, 2016, when uh, Gwari was coming into office. And he was telling me that as a military person, he's going to fight the insecurity. And I said to him, listen, you don't fight insecurity by might, by power, by using guns and everything and all that. Yes, you do that, but you have what you can call fighting insecurity in, in what I can call natural way. So we met again and I said, you, is the, are we more secured now? So he gave me a school, this time I said, let me tell you. The first method of fighting insecurity is by ensuring that you pull people out of poverty. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more you fight insecurity. It is when you've done that, that you'll be able to deal with the each issue of those you can call criminal. But today, the system has been criminalized by because people have stolen the public wealth instead of investing it in critical areas of development, like education, where you now have almost 20 million people, 20 million out of school children, where you have so many people who are supposed to be educated, who have not had the benefit of passing through a school. We have 
120 million people living in poverty, and you say you want to fight security by shooting them or by putting police on. No, you need to start putting them out. So when you think you can do something, why do you have to stay away from doing it? I'm sorry, I've read what WHO said. Uh, no, w, um, yes, World Food Organization, WFO said about Nigeria that there will be hunger in Nigeria this year. And even went to say that the state where we're going to have the highest uh, hunger is going to be Borono State, Yobe, and Adamawa. And like I keep telling people, how can we have a state like Yobe that is 70.9 thousand square kilometers of land? Yobe, 45.5, and Adamawa was at six point something. These three states alone, just three of them combined, is over 150,000 square kilometers of land. That is three times the size of Israel. Sorry, seven, over seven times, that's over seven times the size of Israel. It's over seven times. Israel at 22.1, so seven times should be about, about that size. Yet, Israel can feed themselves, export some agricultural goods, though they import some, because they want some variety. But these states can feed themselves. They have been declared a hunger zone. What is the vast land doing? So if you see opportunity that you can solve this, if you see opportunity that the vast land in, in the north can actually earn more money than oil. Most of you are calling from, are joining up from the United States. And you know that the, today, the number one state in terms of uh, GDP in America is California. What is problem in California? It's agricultural knowledge. And this is what we can provide here easily. And that is why I want to get involved. I want to get involved. I want to be part of changing this narrative. I want to be part of changing this negative situation of Nigeria. And that's why I keep saying, for me, the expression is to see Nigeria work. I'm sorry, I took more than one no, minute to allow me, that's fine. even Thank 10 minutes. Reply, but I have to do that because we can't wait. Anambra, for example, that I came and did a little work. We were number 26 and 27 in work at NECO, and we became number one. Is it just me? No, not, not just you. I think it's just a bit of fluctuation. Or probably think, give him about three minutes. So you, you can change it. And I know with people like you, we can change it. Thank you very much, sir. I, there's a question I want to go into that it's perplexing a lot of Nigerians. There is a Pandora's box that was opened in this election the Pandora's box of tribal hatred and tribalism. It's worrisome at this point. I dare say, because we have a lot of, it's online, we could, we more or less had an e-civil war than it's been physical. Please, sir, what would you suggest for frayed nerves, especially with what happened with tribalism, anti ego sentiments, to around this election period, how do we start to heal as a people, considering who is in Asurok now is not somebody we believe in. So how do we heal as a people 
outside of governance, considering this Pandora's box of tribalism in particular, although there was some uh, religious and bigoted uh, coloration to this, how do we heal this tribal Pandora's box? What, what you know, do you have? I'm one of those, uh, I've always said it, and I've said it in throughout my campaign, the truth is that we don't have a tribalism and this religious thing people are imprinting. It is strictly concussion of the political elites, the criminal elites to continue impoverishing our people and leaving off the constitution. I challenge anybody to show me where Muslims buy bread cheaper. I've challenged anybody to show me where northerners buy bread cheaper. There's more poverty in the north, and that is in the south. So it's not a tribal issue. And I've said to anybody who cares to know, if I'm president today, I'll be celebrated in the north. It's not a religious issue. I've not seen where Muslims buy bread cheaper or there's a road town that the Muslims pass through. I've not seen where Christians buy bread cheaper or anything or there's a hospital to be especially for Christians. When Nigerians are sick, Christian, Muslim, they go to Dubai, they go to Egypt, they go to England. And then I, for one, I've said it, I was governor for a year for eight years. Eight years. My ADC is from Kanu, and he remains the best policeman I've ever met in my life. We're close today and everything. I've lost somebody who usually I've never been. I'm not uh, somebody who goes to hospital very often, but once in the UK, I was told that I need to go through a minor procedure. The procedure was conducted by Dr. Ayo, who is from Ondo. We remain friends to today. Whenever I'm in the UK, and I will discuss about Nigeria, about everything. I have a lot of Yoruba friends very close, whom I talk with every day. We do business together and everything. I've done businesses in Lagos. I've done businesses in North. I used to have office in Kanu, Medugri, and Kaduna. And I said it just yesterday, that if we want the country to work, we must resuscitate the industries that have collapsed in Kanu Bompai, Shadan 1, Shadan 2, Kaduna today, Bangladesh, exports more clothing, which is just textile, than we get from oil. What are we doing for Kaduna? All the textile industries have collapsed. At the time, they're doing everything. So these are things that are not going to be a tribal issue. We have so many shoemakers in our bar and everything. Vietnam exports, if almost about or more than we earn from oil in footwear. So what are we, why are we wasting everybody's time by not doing the right things? I'm talking about tribalism and everything. We're borrowing money, throwing it away. Nobody can account for I borrowed money. Every. Today, they will tell you this is swallowed by a snake. And the next day, it's cat. Who took some? And uh, what type of country is that? We want to see every other country in the world is borrowing money. America today owes more than 100% of the GDP as debt. Japan is only 200 and something percent. But they, you can see what they use it for. 
in our own case, nobody can tell you what is happening. It's becoming a total joke. So that's what I'm saying. You see people who are elected living a life of stars, living a life of affluence. When those who elected them are dying. That's not what we're asking for. We're not asking for more than that. Thank Let's you very much. Things that are proper. That's it. Thank you very much, Excellency. For my next question, I'm going to bring up Nigerian women. But please listen to my argument. When the current administration of Muhammadu Buhari was coming into power, they promised Nigerian women 40% of appointments on record. When they came into power, they only picked about six or seven women as ministers. One of those women, Kemi Adeo, she had an issue with her certification. She was taken away from the position and I, she wasn't replaced till much later on with a woman. That administration has bothered at about below 10 women in government, in ministerial positions. But when you see this obedient movement, Nigerian women, sir, came out with their chest to support you. If you could tell Nigerian women the first thing, encourage them and thank them for supporting you this election and make them promises when you become president, whenever all of this is sorted out, what would you say to the Nigerian women who believed in you from working and then moving forward with you at the helm of affairs? You know, I've talked about women issue a lot and uh, my own things, okay. I, let me join. Let me join you in saying, very big thank you to the Nigerian women, my very dear mothers, sisters. I can tell you, in Nigeria, from my own experience, women are more productive, more honest, more trustworthy than the men. I was chairman of a bank. I succeeded because I had a treasurer, a risk officer, and chief of president, they were all women. Company secretary, they were all women. And it was fantastic. Because they, they're less corrupt. As governor, my chief of staff, commissioner for finance, Head of service, commission for education, all the areas where I did well, I can tell you are women. I believe in them. If I believe that we don't bring in them on board, is a major part of where we are not productive and even more corrupt. So it's something we need to deal with. But Knowing how things are here, we need to back it up with law. That's why I keep saying it must not go on without being backed by law. If we're going to say they will have 30% or 40%, let's legislate about it and ensure that it's going to work. I have studied what is happening in Bangladesh. If you go to Bangladesh today, because they have something that is backed by a rule of law, that's why they have a prime minister today that is a woman, opposition leader that is a woman. Their number one export is clothing. That industry is 60% occupied by women terms of employment. And I was in the villages and saw what they could do. So I assure you that I'm not going to make fake promises. I know what is happening with the obedient family. And we're going to work hard. We're going to work as a family. And you know, I can't preach. Like when I came to Anambra State, I kept telling them, I can't do all this and come and fail. It will be, you know, people didn't vote for me on the 25th of February. They didn't vote for Peter Abu. They entrusted their hope on me. And you can't dash their hope. 
It was like going to a bank to pay, credit their money, hoping to withdraw it at an appropriate time. It's not because, I mean, they know they're not going to get anything from me other than just keeping to my promise. And I would have done that. I had people like so many of them sacrificing and following me around and everything. It was, um, there's no way I would have. I would have done a lot, including ensuring that Nigerian women are brought into governance, ensure their place in corporate world, because not just in government, and pay emphasis to education of the women, of women, young girls in the North. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I think uh, we have a couple of questions from the comments section, um, so we'll be engaging that way, um, allow people who allow comment questions from our people down there. They don't really want to talk to you, but we have close to over 35,000 people listening to you now, so in case you don't know. Um, that's people why. have people on Zoom. Yeah, people and on they, Zoom. And they're telling me that I've abandoned them and went let on them, this Twitter. Let them say abandoned. Let them say abandoned. They, you, you, have, you have done so many Zoom meetings in the course of your campaign. You've never had this. I was, actually, I was actually with them until the uh, people said no. When I was struggling with you, I was answering them, but now they, they feel very abandoned. Let okay, them, I'm waiting. Let them say abandoned, sir. For the for the moment, we have, we have tried having you on this Twitter space for a very long period of time. All through the elections, we couldn't. So, I think I just rush out down to our. I'm speaker. not hearing you again. What is happening? Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Uh, Hello, sir. Can you hear my Hello? voice? Sir? Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. I can hear you, but uh, they said I should abandon you people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> tell, tell them that he's the president of 200 million Nigerians. They would have to be able to share him, please. He's not public property. They said, they said I should leave you people alone till next time. Yes. You're so, I you. agree. I agree. So, let's be... Let me and these Twitter people continue. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me now? We are 35,000 on this platform. Oh, my God. It's still a conversation that, that, that is happening. It's a conversation for two of us. Both of us are going on together. So I'm listening to the questions. All right, sir. Can you hear, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, let's take the next speaker. Let me take, bring in Savik now. Savik, you can ask I your question in a minute. Um, then I uh, will okay. take... Oh, our ladies dropped off. So let's take Savik in a minute. Mr. Mabatunde, you come after Savik. And Savik, you have a minute, please. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Sorry, Saddam, if we can, if we can work on the timing, one question per person, we have, um, we have a lot of questions. Thank you very much, His Excellency, for um, giving us this opportunity to interact with you. Uh, one of the things you said during the campaign, which actually uh, galvanized a lot of us, is that you told the corrupt establishment if they can find w just one corrupt case, where you stole money, that you will abandon your capital. The recording in process. Uh, a speech that we've had. We've not been able to have. Yes, I'm listening to you. Uh, Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm okay, hearing so, you. So, now we are, we are getting an interference from your others from the Zoom meeting. I don't know if you could. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to ask them now. Continue, just continue. One of the things that you said that captivated a lot of us is that you dared the establishment, the corrupt establishment, and you told them if they can find out one thing, one corrupt case against you, that you are going to uh, abandon your campaign. And up to this moment, even as we are talking right now, they've not been able to come out with one single thing to actually indict you with. And because of that, what they have actually embarked on is actually going around with misinformation, yeah. propaganda, and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, going after your personality to see how they can actually go after you. And this is not really a question. What I'm asking is that with all this barrage of misinformation, 
barrage of propaganda, barrage of, you know, going after your person, you know, are trying to make sure that they degrade you. You've actually kept the energy level even far better than what we saw during the campaign. We've seen you engaging with Nigerians. We've seen you engaging, you know, talking to a lot of people, trying to motivate people, even engaging with the so-called politicians that are actually, they were actually against you during the campaign. So I want you to talk to us. What exactly, you know, is the brain behind, you know, this kind of, you know, uh, uh, mercy and this kind of grace that you have? Because for me, someone like me, I would have broken down by now, but we see you standing every day and still talking to the issues that are actually affecting Nigerians. Tell us what is actually behind the grace that you have, sir. Thank you. My brother, it's very simple. If you live in a system, I've said it before, where you can see in pain and everything, people going around trying to live a life where life can be better. I met a mother who told me an interesting story. He had a daughter who was sick. The daughter is sick. She's not working. The daughter is in hospital. The daughter, 17,000 naira. He cannot afford 17,000 naira. So he, she's prepared to sleep with somebody if the person can give her 20,000. But was lucky to meet a foundation being run by a good Samaritan, a good Nigerian, who listened to her story instead of sleeping with her, was able to pay her 20,000 and decided to pay the daughter's school fees through a university. These stories are bound in Nigeria every day because people are jobless. People are not doing anything. And you know you can help. Why can't you help? That is the energy. That is why I go around, I go around in schools, I go around everywhere doing that. That's why I go around doing that and going everywhere. So my dear, it is an, it's a difficult thing, but it's something you can do without. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, go on. All right. So the challenge, this poverty you're seeing in Nigeria can be reversed. This underdevelopment you're seeing in Nigeria can be re reversed. It's something I've experimented in a private sector, in a public sector as a governor. If you know what Anambra used to be before my predecessor came on board, followed by me until today, it is the far worse. I know we have one or two challenges now, which I know the new governor is grappling with and trying to deal with head on in terms of insecurity. But I assure you, it used to be far worse than it is today. You know, it used to be far worse. We started changing it and everything. So you can it can be changed. There's a time young boys don't go to school here yeah, any longer. All the schools were girls. The schools were dilapidated. The schools were not anything to. But we came to him, changed it, and the story is all on the positive side to today. So it can be the same thing can happen nationally. It is something the country can be changed. It used to be a beautiful country where people had hope, had everything. So I know it can be saved with change. 
All right, thank you very much. Um, let's take a lady. Um, we have had guys speaking and asking you questions. So we'll take a lady um, right now. Um, we are me. I think we are me, someone you know already, but we are me. Let me allow you to come in in the next one minute. Thank you. Hello. Is she there? We are me. Are you there? Let, let me let, let me ask you. Uh, hello, sir. I want to ask one question again. There is something that this election exposed <laughs> to Nigeria. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me? Actually? I can hear you. There is something this election exposed to us as Nigerians. It exposed the amount of illiterate people that are in this country. I don't mean the amount of people that went to school. I don't mean the amount of people that are quote unquote educated. I mean the amount of illiterate people in this country. One of my biggest fears is these people seem to have been given the realms of power. We've seen what happened in the last administration when you put square pegs in circular holes. If there is any governor in this country that can beat his chest and say, I took education in my state from 26 or lower 20s, almost 30 to number one, it is you. Please, sir, what do you have planned for education in Nigeria? From bottom all the way up possibly to adult education, because I even feel some of our adults are not yet lost. There is problem with cognitive dissonance. There is problem with drawing parallels, especially when explaining issues. Some people have an, a problem with being given facts and figures right in front of them, and they cannot assimilate this intelligently. What are your plans for education in Nigeria on all levels and for all facets of Nigeria, sir? Okay, let me, let me help you. Let me tell you first. You must understand that there's the only three things that dif differentiates developed and underdeveloped nations. It is not too many things. It's just about three major issues. Number one is education. It's been proved that more a, a more a society is educated, the better their development. Because all the foundations which you talk that develop the society, science is about education. Technology, all this is about education. Whatever, they will talk, you talk about STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, all, it's all about education. If you're going to build, construct big and better buildings, it's about education. If you're going to talk about infrastructure, it's about education. So the foundation of development is education. The other one is health. You must talk about people's health. When people are healthy, it contributes to their productivity. It makes them contribute more. And you talk about pulling people out of poverty, which is per capita. So education is critical. The only reason why Asian countries did better than African countries is that they invested in education. It's not in China, Vietnam, all these countries did that. The level of education is better. And that can be seen very simple. If you go and compare all these countries with Nigeria, say in the 80s and 90s, they all have the same level of human development index measurement. They were at the same level. They were all low. Most of them today have moved to high, medium, and this, like China, like Vietnam, and other places. And that made, makes them more productive. So for me, education is critical. When you see people coming here 
and I'm talking about uh, uh, we do respect constructing bridge, flyover, airport, a lot. That is not the issue. These are things that will come when you build the foundation. The foundation is education. The foundation is number one education, number two education, number three education. Unless people are educated, so if you're talking about infrastructure, the number one infrastructure you need to develop a society is human infrastructure, because that's what will make them develop the right character, values, attitude, and everything. You, somebody talked about the issue of empowering those, or what you mentioned earlier about seeing the literacy in Nigeria. What you see is that happened, what's happened in Nigeria is that is a case of where, very sorry, I always use very often, and people don't understand it when I use it. It's a case of where lunatics took over the asylum. So those who are not supposed to be role models, who are not supposed to be part of society, have become role models. So it's easier for me to now move around. And it's like that in every part of Nigeria, not just in one place, you know? So you see somebody without a daytime job, driving around with several vehicles, it is the only place where you elect somebody like me is a governor. Suddenly, he moves from not owning a house to owning several houses, owning several cars, even possibly flying around in, in private jets and everything. And I've been celebrated because the system has been criminalized. And you must ensure that you reverse that situation if that society will develop. Because what did it do? Such as such, which is around corruption, kills entrepreneurship, it kills professionalism, it kills hard work. And that's what we are faced today. And it's like the election now becomes government because it's now a criminal enterprise, becomes a place for gangsters. And you know, when, when gangsters do anything, once they capture it, so it is about state capture for personal benefit. So the gangsters capture it, they don't care. And everybody is jumping to it. You know, you become the old man out. That's why I say to the obedience, let's peacefully, in an organized manner, going through the law, remaining law abiding, be able to deal with this situation by just quiet, respectful, be able to start changing it. And the only way you can do that is to start telling people by changing their perception and conception of life. We need to work on their mind. We need to work on what they think is the values, work on their character, work on their behavior, and say, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong, this is right. We're not gonna change it by force. We're not gonna change it by quarreling. We're not gonna change because this is their, if I will go that way, we're actually going to their own space. All right, thank you very much. So I think let's bring in um, a lady now. Um, Kibati, can you hear me, please? You have the space in a minute, please. Thank you. Hi, Sadam. Good evening. Good evening, Your Excellency. Wow. Uh, oh, boy, I'm blushing. I, I finally get to speak to you. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Um, boy, Good evening. Oh boy, I have got, I've got so many questions for you, and um, I don't want to get beaten by Sadam, so I'm going to try to keep it brief, as brief as possible. Um, Everyone on this space, obedience generally will tell you that we've been to the ringer. I, I do not know how you cope. Um, I don't know how you handle, you've managed the last couple of uh, months, um, but it's been very, it's been hell, you know, it's just been Well, hell for me, there's nothing, you know, it's something we need to be part of. There's nothing, you know, in life of struggling. Coincidentally, I don't think I've gotten anything easy in my life. It's been 
struggle, pain, and difficulty. Essentially where you think people are doing the wrong thing. And I lived in a system where things are totally wrong. So people like you, those poor people you are looking at their faces, are giving you the courage. I used to tell people, I visited schools. At least, I visited one school at least a month. I recall going to a school in Kogi, in a village in Kogi, and I found young people naked, almost going to school. Under a building without a roof and everything. And I see how excited these children are. See me, they don't know who I am, but they've just been told that I'm coming to Rufia School. And they were, all, they were, I, I was almost going to faint because they all jumped on me. I found myself in the floor and they were all on top of me. Excited, I'm just going to roof your school, and it was going then, it was going to cost me just about a 1.2 million naira. And this money, ordinarily, I could easily spend on a dinner with friends in Lagos. And look at what he's doing to these children. So, for me. That is where I get my energy from. We must oh, change wow. here. We must make it better. Uh, okay, so let me quickly ask you my questions. I will try to keep it brief, like I said. Um, so, I, like I said, we've been it's been very difficult. Um, the first question is this: um, if everywhere I look, um, my DMs are full of obedient I've been chatting with for the last um, seven, eight months, who are very optimistic before the election. But I sense a general feeling of doom and gloom right now. And there are lots of people who are giving up, who are not happy with everything that's happened. And then there are people of the opinion that once this inauguration happens tomorrow, it is all over. Our struggle is dead. I'm, 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 I've, I'm, I've had very serious conversations with obedience um, who are of this very firm opinion that when, when this um, INEC president elect is, you know, is, is sworn in tomorrow, that is the end of the movement. That there's no no justice can be gotten if this happens. I would love for you to address that. That's number one. Number two. This no one, 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 my sister, one. I, beg. Ah, oh, no, stand up. I promise you, this is going to be very, very brief, very brief, very brief. I promise you, I swear, very brief. The second question. Um, there's a lot of energy in the movement, right? Over the last um, like a year or so, lots of young people became active, politi um, active politically. But uh, thanks, thanks for this movement. However, you know this is a marathon, not a sprint. I believe that it goes even beyond your president. I'm sorry, your 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 campaign, your run, right? Um, young people want to be active. However, they're looking for a vehicle to do this, and obviously, the vehicle, the most apparent, the most obvious vehicle, is the Labour Party. But if you look at what's been happening in Labour Party recently, there's been way too too much confusion, leadership crisis. Um, and some, you know, people not happy with some of the candidates emerging from the party, etc., etc., etc. What can be done? How, how, how? I would like for you to address obedience because we all want to register with okay. the party. We want to be active, right? Okay. What let, can be let done me, to sanitize the Labour Party and encourage young people to join in and be fantastic. Active? Fantastic. Let me tell you two things. Let me start with the issue of inauguration. And it is over. When you bring a change, you have for enemy all those who live of the order. What we've done in the past one year is not the ending of our movement. It is not beginning of the last chapter of it. It is the ending of the beginning. We've just started the journey. And I assure you that what is going to happen tomorrow 
will actually strengthen me in this journey. Not done for me. The reason being, I didn't start it and thinking it's going to be over in one day, in one month, or in one year. No society has had that about change. And ours won't be different. It will make us stronger. And let nobody make you believe that because of one or two promise or this and that, it's going to change. Of course, people, because of the way they believe that thing has said, will move on. After all, and those who came into it transactionally will move on. For me, it is not a transactional thing. It's not a business. It is about transformation. And that takes time. So I will be in it, and I urge you to stay in it for the future and a better society. It is not going to be easy. I plead that you stay on it. In Labour Party, there's no issue with Labour Party. If you listen to the interview about the man who is claiming to be chairman, a papa, they said, was there any issue in Labour Party before the election? He said, no. The issue started after the election. Why? All they did was they came on board to be able to see if they can withdraw the case from the court. But they didn't know that I was further than them. That court case is between my name, is my name. Labour Party can withdraw from the case and P2B will continue. Again, the movement which we are doing as a family is not Labour Party. Labour Party remains our vehicle. And I can tell that vehicle is intact. There's nothing wrong with it. If you go to INEC, the chairman of Labour Party is Julius Abure. And so are the other officers. And Labour Party was formed by NLC, Nigerian Labour Congress, and TUC, Trade Union Congress of Nigeria. And these two bodies have come out and say there's no other, they don't know any other person except this person. People have been given money to do a job or act, and they must do that job. We are losing you, sir. Um... Yeah? Hello? Okay, can go on, sir. If some people come out and say, Peter B have ordered people to kill him, Peter B have killed you for what? I have never knowingly asked anybody to slap anybody. In my eight years of being in office, I've never one day asked a policeman to detain one person. I've not done anything like that, and I will never do it. It is not possible. So when you now see people trying to create a scene, and you say there's a crisis, that crisis is a crisis of confusion because they've seen that we will take time, we'll get a gathering of, of the candidates. That's how it will start. You know, this is normal. When you start something good, even those who are not supposed to be part of it, we rush into it. With time, with all of you coming into it, 
will be able to stabilize it and everything. In my previous party, Africa, we had the same experience. When I became governor, I started quarreling with everybody. I tell people every day that I used to go to Abuja and meet president who said me, Peter, nobody's happy with you. There's nothing that is making people not to be happy with me, except that I've stopped that public money should be used for public good. And that's it. So we're going to have the same problem with time. So be rest assured, all this we're going through internally as a party, we will overcome. Two, all those bad candidates you think will on their own find out that this is not a transnational entity, so they will go away. If we all stay on, and if we all stay on, we will one day overcome the criminality of the Nigerian state. Hello, sir. I want to ask another question. In this election, we achieved something very monumental. We managed to get 38 House of Reps. We managed to get eight senators. And we ended up with one governor in Abia State, one case in contention in Enugu. And also, I want to believe a case in contention for Lagos. With this election, we put some people in power that are actually greenhorns to governance. We can admit that on a factual scale. Do you have any mechanism, any plans to help us hold these people as well to account? It's there, do you have forums? Will there be meetings? So that even the few people that Labour Party managed to put into offices, these eight senators and these 38 House of Reps, can be so outstanding in how they put out their duties. Because if you admit that this is a marathon and not a sprint, the way they put out their duties can be so outstanding that it buys more people into the Labour Party and obedience ideology. So I ask, what is your plan, your mechanism to hold the people that even within INEX shabby election, we managed to win and put into power so that they can do a good job and further serve as ambassadors for this movement. What are your plans, sir? I agree with you. Uh, we're, we're, what your suggestion, I call it a suggestion, is what we'll try to do. You know, is what you will try to do. I won't say to you, Uh, you know, I would, we will would try to do this. What you're saying now is what we'll try to do. I know that the election team will try to work hard. That I can tell you. Reason being, election team was managing that of Diamond Bank. When I left $50 million and $12 billion a day, he has written about it. Go and look at his article on managing state resources. We have it, and I'll send it to you, what he said. He said he didn't know he was going to be governor. He was talking about how I manage state resources, how we used to talk, how you will tell me this? I said, no, 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 no. It is public money. We have to do it and make sure that they will save it, do this. He even came, you know, he even came when I when I handed over. I invited the three bank MDs. So I handed over publicly. I invited the three of them and they ensured that everybody in an open hall, everybody listened to the amount I left with the banks. I will call the amount and I will call the bank MD and say, we have this money with you. I want you to tell Anambra people. So 
for now, let, I don't see how he can afford to go wrong. That's what I think. Thank you very much for this answer. My next question has to do with your vice. A man that we have come to love as much as we love you, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed. When this election started, we were introduced to the concept of the placeholder when you had to use Doni Okupe as your placeholder while we search for a more balanced candidate. This question, just briefly, make us fall in love with Dati all over again. How did you meet him? How did you find him worthy of being your vice presidential candidate? How is he doing? We've not seen, we've not heard from him in a while. And no, he he's, there, he's there. He's got, you, you see him in Nigeria tomorrow at the inauguration of Alex Oti. He will oh, be there. Fantastic. So, so how did you know him? How long have you known him? We introduced him to you. Let's fall in love with Yusuf Dati all over again. So please, I, I, break down, I would break say. It I would say we've known each other for a long time, but we've known each other for long enough to know. Well, when I was, what, what was the more interesting for me when I was looking for somebody to work with in the North? I wanted somebody who will be exposed and understand development the way I do. I don't understand that the engine of development is education. And for him to have invested in building a university, and now two of them, I believe that he understands. And somebody will understand that the issue of the problem in the North is not caused by anybody, but by the system not investing in the people in the North. And he understands that how much. And I can tell you, it's been wonderful. Two of us were in Kaduna yesterday. If you look at my tweet and everything, he just came back on Friday. He's in a way, you know, a, a bit, um, a, how do I say it? He's going to see his family, look at his business and everything. And uh, it, probably not, uh, a bit even demoralized by the entire system, but uh, he's a very, very, he's a first class person when it comes to the issue of believing that society can be better. Okay, uh, so let's, let's take back. Um, we have questions on the comment section. Uh, we'll ask you a few uh, right now. Please, guys, um, before then, I just want to tell you guys that this space is brought to you guys courtesy of Ariel Facts. Um, it's a new media organization out there. So you can follow Pirate Facts on Twitter, um, on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram. Um, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel also. Uh, okay, so let me just bring in a lady right now. We and me, as one of our strong voices, a young lady um, that has done a whole lot for you in this movement. So I think I'll allow her coming right now. We and me, can you hear me? If you have, if you can, please, you have the space in a minute. Yes, please. I can hear you. Saddam, can you hear me? If you can hear me, just flash an emoji. Okay, cool. I don't necessarily have a question, but um, there's just something that I want to tell PO and everyone listening on the space. So when the space started, PO said something. Um, he said, um, you know, during his um, you know, walk to become governor of um Anambra State, sometimes he would um go to court alone. Uh, sir, if you can hear me, I just want to tell you that um, you're not going to do this process alone. This time around, it is absolutely different. Um, we will not let you, I will not let you do this journey alone. Most of the time, all of the time, you're always the one reassuring us that everything is going to be fine. We should be rest assured. But I just want you to also know that we have your back 100%. So this is me telling you to be rest assured that you will definitely not walk this journey alone. We started you. before you. You came into this journey. We chose you. It is not just your mandate. It is our mandate. 
we are all running for presidency through you. I am running for presidency through you. So I and many other people, we are going to fight for our mandate to be restored back to us. I know that, yes, your name is on it, but this is a collective fight for everyone. We know that this um, journey was never going to be easy, but best believe that we are going to stay with you till the very end because this is our country. Like you said, we have no other country except this one, so we have to stay. Oh. And your um, vice, Dasi, has also said that nobody's going to come to save us. We will be the one to save this country. Power belongs to the people. The people make up the structure. The people make up society. So good people, people willing to fight for democracy and fight for this country, we will do this journey with you. So, sir, be rest assured that no matter what, we will be here with you. And if every other person says they're no longer interested, at least I and four other people that I know for sure will be here with you so you can be rest assured. I don't have a question for you because there is nothing you haven't said before that is new. You have always been consistent and that is why I chose you to run on my behalf. So um, for me to you, this is me telling you that um, thank you and we will thank be you, here. My sister. We will be here till the very end. So we'll stand by you, stand by you and stand for you. So that's Thank you, my sister. Question. You know, I said it before that people did not vote for me. They, they invested their hope in me. It's a different thing from voting for me. And that their hope is that we will build a better society for them. And that's it. Parents used to tell me when I was in Anam Brothers, because I've said a lot of that about the education, they voted for me because they believe that their children will be in better school. And they thank me for building a better school for their children. So I thank you people and continue to say so with from sincerely. So thank you. All right, thank you very much, sir. Okay, let's keep the conversation. Um, I'm okay. sorry, we ask, when are we going to end? Well, how many hours do you want to give us, sir? How many? We have over 100 <laughs> ah, 200 questions. I was going to say, I was, you know, when I was starting, I said, I told him, I said, we start by 5, we end by 6.30. How? We start by <laughs> 6. It's now 9 o'clock, 3 hours. Those it are actually, literally. actually, I have an event. I have something i needed to do by nine I will, I will be ready to go on as long as you will want but now that they said it's because of fire parts and everything i'm going to plead with you david and everybody let's find if it's a monthly if it's a quarterly or this that we can do this because remember what i said whatever happens we need to stay on So we okay, really so need to I, know I how I we can always interact and everything. Okay, okay so I think uh, we'll take, let's take uh, the last two, let's take uh, two, four questions then. We'll see how it goes from there. But I think we should make this um a quarterly something. It makes it better for us. Uh, well, me, Nigeria, have yeah, this please. Or by monthly, it doesn't yeah, matter to me. Well, me, Nigeria, go on, please. All right, thank you very much, Saddam. Okay, first, I just want to thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, first, let me to draw everybody's attention. I have to do some housekeeping for parallel facts. Um, please, guys, um, Saddam has said it, but in case if you are struggling to get the links, the link are on the Jumbotron. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, to every of our channels, because uh, we want to be able to deal with the current, one of the battles we'll fight in this process is the media battle, where there will be a lot of fake news, a lot of propaganda, a lot of so many you know, clickbait, you know, I, I think we started seeing it from the first um, day, so please follow that, and you know, a lot of our spaces that go on every day, the One Million Mama space and all that. All right, sir. Um, I mean, I too, I don't really have a question. Um, so, first of all, I just want to say that I'm with where I have said personally, and I think a lot of Nigerians share that sentiment that we are going to stay with you on this 
till the end. We are not, I mean, we are going to stay on it till the end. And we have even vowed with Gun and Extra Step to say, we know a lot of people may be discouraged at some point, but we also help them to, um, whenever they are discouraged, we, we are here to encourage um, each other. You have said at the beginning of your of your submission of, of, of you know, this space that, you know, you trust the judiciary. So I want to tell you categorically that before you came, we didn't, we never trusted the judiciary. We didn't have any confidence in the judiciary. But through you, and I want the judiciary to know that through you now, we are beginning to build confidence and we hope that they don't um, betray us. We hope that they don't take that for granted. We know the law. I can tell you, sir, that most of the obedience can be your lawyers. And most of them really study law. Some of them now quote constitution, they quote the electoral act, they quote, you know, any guidelines. And we know the law. So we are just telling the judiciary that we know the right thing, but we just want it to come from them. So thank you very much. I think one question on the comment section I should just ask you on behalf of that person was about the middle belt killing and the person was trying to ask um, if what, what's your take on that and or, and how, how do you intend to handle it? When? When? Well, what is with you is a very fast question. You know, I spent my Christmas um, in Benue with the with, in IDP camp. It is unfortunate that people can live in IDP camp and refugee camp in their country when they're not out to war. Look at what happened in Plato. It's unimaginable that all these things are happening in a country where we're supposed to have a democratic state. It's something we need to deal with head on. It's something we have to deal with head on. I say it twice because the whole body has on lack of education, poverty, and this concussion by politicians to make us remain divided either by religion or by ethnicity. Because people say it's about land, people say it's about this, people say it's about that. And alas, we have we have far more vast land than United Arab Emirates, Dubai that we all go every day. So it is not about it is all about land. If it's land, I do not think we are going to be having that uh, um, problem. People say, oh, it's about religion. And I've always said it, you've heard me say it several times. Our own religion is not different from what is obtainable in other countries of the world. I'm a Christian and I'm a Catholic. If I go to Dubai when I used to go there, I worship at the Catholic Church there. The Catholic Church in Dubai is built, the land was donated and built by Emmy of Dubai, who is supposed to be a Muslim. It was donated and built by any of Dubai. In Indonesia, they have church and they even have bishop there. Indonesia is the country with the highest concentration, the most populated Muslim country in the world. So it is not about this. In London, the mosque, Central Mosque, the land was donated by the Queen of England. Was donated by the Queen of England. He's not a Muslim. He's head of Church of England. Agagan uh, Christian Church. So it is not about religion. 
it is that people are not educated, they are poor, they don't, they have not been taught, people are using them, using tribe and everything to manipulate them. These are things we must deal with and deal with this head on. Thank you, sir. Um, let's, I think uh, we're going to, we'll see how this space, I would like to have a commitment from you, sir, because the whole of obedience, we really want to be having you on spaces, um, because going forward, we understand how the journey is going to be. Many of us have never been through this road before, but you have been through this road three times. Uh, although as a, as a governor, uh, people will really need to be hearing from you. So probably uh, when you say bi-monthly, Hopefully, we can really have that uh, these spaces by monthly. It's going to be very, very helpful for the obedient movement. But let me let me allow the remaining speakers up here to ask you questions uh, real quick. One questions each, please. Um, and I think I'm going to take a little bit. My sister, Pearls, another strong voice and strong advocate for the movement, and one of your strong disciples, she's up here also. Pearls, let me bring you into the conversation. Now. Good afternoon. A uh, big good evening, my sister. Okay, good afternoon, um, Saddam. Thank you very much for this space. Good day, David. Your Excellency, it's very good to see you here on this space. And um, what I have is a comment, not a question. Um, this is something I said to you when you came here to the US in one of your meetings with the obedience, and I'm going to say it here again. Um, your Excellency, I just want to say thank you very much for who you are. Thank you for stepping up to contest and um, you've given a whole lot of Nigerians hope that Nigeria can actually get better. Because trust me, before you came out here, a lot of people had lost hope that anything good can actually come out from Nigeria. So coming out to contest gave a whole lot of people hope. Thank you very much, sir, for changing the dynamics of the Nigerian political space. You know, so prior to the elections, I had them um, Twitter spaces where I had over 15 commissioners that worked with you as governor, including people like Professor Stella Okuna, and they all had wonderful reports to give about you as governor of Anambra State. So I, I was actually looking forward to having you as president. I know you are still going to become our president. We look forward to recovering our mandate, and um, we're not losing hope. Like someone has said here before, we're going to be with you. You're not going to go to court alone this time around. You have many people like me, Saddam, a whole thousands of obedience standing for you. We are with you, sir. We just want to say thank you. We appreciate you. We love you. And keep being who you are. Just keep being who you are, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. And you too, for what you're doing by believing in what we're doing. And like I keep saying, if there's anything you think I'm doing wrong and everything, please be able to voice it out. Let's discuss it. You know, I want to learn as well. You know, I, I need to, there's a lot I can learn from all of you on how we can do it better. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Bartunde, you've been here for long, so I don't know if you want to ask a question or a comment. Um, you have the space on now. Good evening. Good evening, Emma Saddam. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, everyone, um, for being so steadfast. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Pitalbi, um, I want to thank you for being as steadfast and as persistent as you have been in this fight. I want to thank you for your courage uh, and for your grace under fire. You've, you've been just fantastic and exemplary to uh, those of us who are politicians and millions more who were not politicians but are now politicians because of you. The question I wanted to ask is more of uh, a developmental question. In view of the huge uh, debt overhang, and in my opinion, the deliberate plunging of Nigeria into needless debt over the last eight years, do you think, sir, that once the mandate is recovered, because I believe that by the grace of God it will be recovered, do you think that we will have enough to fix our specifically transport infrastructure problems. Because I personally believe that our GDP is 
the reason our GDP is low is because of the uh, the the relatively poor transportation infrastructure that we have, both roads and trains and water transportation. We we just seem to be determined not to maximize uh, what we have. We, we haven't even finished trading within Nigeria itself. The volume of trade inside Nigeria, in my opinion, is very, very low because of our transportation problems. So thank you, sir. Well, uh, I will differ a bit with you. The, 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 it's not just trade. The level of productivity is very low. That includes what you say, volume of trade, volume of transportation infrastructure, everything is low. And like I said before, let me tell you about debt. There's nothing wrong with debt. It is what you use the debt to do that is a problem. All the G7 countries that you see that are meeting, and they call them the seven most developed economies. None of them hold less than 70% of the GDP. To the best of my knowledge, unless it changed yesterday, America now, with about 25 trillion GDP, is battling with that one trillion debt. That's the biggest economy. Followed by China inside, but China is low when you compare to per capita. So I'll say followed by Japan. And Japan is going to over 30% of their GDP. The difference is that the debt in these two countries, Germany, Britain, are invested. The people know where this money, you know, is invested. They're invested for the benefit of the people. Ours is that. It is all about consumption. When you borrow for production, you're going to get the benefit. When you borrow for consumption, you've thrown it away. And that is where the problem is. So we're almost at a debt of over nearly 40, 50% of our GDP without anything to show for it. When Japan is only over 200 and 30% of their GDP, everybody knew that they, this balloon, when they were trying to save their economy during the financial crisis. And today, Japan is still the highest holder of US Treasury. So they will have some investors. We don't have that. If we become productive, you start pulling people out of poverty. You generate more money. And with that, you start again reducing and managing your debt. Let me give you an example. Our debt today is about 80 trillion which if you use the official rate, call it $200 billion, which is about 50% of our GDP. But I can tell you, if you, if you borrow, if we're able to invest another 50 billion properly in critical areas of development, you can have your GDP, you can have a growth of over 6%, seven, up to 7%, which can now bring you, within a short while, to a GDP of 600, which will increase your per capita, reduce your debt. Your debt is down to 200. 
You take another 50, your debt has increased to where it is almost maybe 60 something percent of your GDP. In fact, if you borrow 100, you are 75 percent. But if you increase to 600, it comes down to 50. Because the last hundred you borrow, you've invested it properly. If you throw money today, we can generate more money today from agriculture. It's like when people talk about this issue of rate of exchange. You can strengthen your money today by doing more export. What drives the exchange rate? Your reserve. What drives your reserve? Export. Nigeria is a country if you use 2021, because 2022, we're still looking at the numbers. In 2021, our export was 18.9 trillion, which at 650 is under 30 billion dollars. When a country like Vietnam, within the same year, exported over 350 billion dollars. Our own is in Kuruna oil. Vietnam own is 90% manufactured goods. Vietnam, 100 million people living on one third of, their la of our land because they live on 331,000 square kilometers and we live on 920,000. So they have one third of our land, half of our population and their export is 10 times, over 10 times ours. If Nigeria today can double its export alone, you will increase our reserve, bring down our rate of exchange, and if you continue investment in critical areas, our GDP will grow, your per capita income will grow, you pull more people out of poverty, you earn more revenue. Because one of the pr problems of government today is revenue mismatch. You can earn more, earn more revenue when millions of people are in poverty. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more you increase productivity, the more you get more revenue to do government job instead of borrowing. And if you continue to invest in the right direction, the more you continue to turn around the country. And that's what we're doing. So that's why I plead with you. Do not be born and do not be, don't lose hope about what is going to happen within the week or anything. Let us remain law abiding, remain peaceful, watch what is happening. People will try to do it. And I'm not saying that those who are going to come in are not going to do the right things or wrong things. But remember what I said, the process through which people arrive into office, for me, is somewhat fundamental. Somebody can go to exam, do exam and practice, copy, pass, come out of school, and become the best entrepreneur, become the best of every, even become the best of everything. For me, let's get the right things right. Let's get this right, because that's what the children, that's what the young ones are going to look at. We now have people in primary school and secondary school belonging to cult, belonging to cult. That is unbelievable in our country. Why do you think they're doing that? Because they're seeing their parents do the wrong thing. We must stop that. And that's where I am. And that's why I plead with you people, please, as we go through this pain, let us stay together. Let us vow to do the right things. Let us vow to do that people should have the right character. We want to see the right people where people can tell us who they are, the background, live normal life. Nobody's a saint. Nobody's, nobody will claim to be one. 
I don't. Maybe I've made some mistakes in the past. Maybe I've done some things wrong. Maybe I've done this. But like I always say, I can't say I've knowingly done this thing, which is wrong. I can't say, oh, I've given the resources to manage. Somebody asked me a question about a month ago. He said, Peter, supposing tomorrow we found out there's a place you stole 10 billion of Alhambra money. And I said to him, you never find out. He said, I said, you will never find out. He said, supposing we found where you stole 5 billion. I said, you'll never find out. And I said to him, but let me tell you, remember what I said, you will never find out. You will never find out. But I told him, I said, let me tell you the difference between me and some other people. Assuming I decided to keep $150 million, which I left behind, and I decided to settle myself with 15, I left 150, uh, 135 million. I told him, I said, after all, the Lord, they wanted me to pass. They were to build the house for me in Orca, my village, or Abuja, or three places I wanted. And that they, from what they, the Lord said, each of those that would have cost an umbrella state about half a billion, neither them. So they would have used about 1.5 billion build three houses for me, buy me cars, everything was to cost an umbra when I was living, 2.5 billion. And I could have said to them, give it to me in cash. And I took it away. I said, at that time I'm leaving office, I wasn't owing anybody, I didn't create any debt, I never borrowed one naira, I didn't. So, assuming that was the case, and I had to take $15 million. That is even pardonable that somebody who came borrowed the same amount and took it away. But that I'm telling him, go and look into that I can account for 99% of Anambra's losses when I was in government, maybe 1% that may not account, maybe even 2%, but I'm sure that I'm comfortably over 90%. And not that even 10 years, I can account for them today. Not even going to look for any book. If you call anything, I can tell you, this is how we handle this money. This is how we handle this money. This is how we handle this money. So, so I, I, I have to, I just have to come in here, um, because my, I am getting a whole lot of slack from from the back. I don't think you can hear me. But I'm getting a whole lot of slack from the background. I can, I can hear you, control. but I'm begging to run away. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I just want to do right now. That's what I want to do right now. Please, guys. Um, the updates are going to be coming here by monthly, so we have to hold you by your words. Um, if you can account for Anambra's money 99%, we're going to account. You're going to be accountable for your word here on this platform. We're expecting you back in two weeks' time. Is that a deal? No, I thought they said, no, I thought they said buy money. I thought okay, every, every two, two months, months okay, not two weeks. Every two months, okay, once every two. No, quite frankly, quite frankly, we can meet as as long as um, often as we can. You know. Uh, Every two months, so that we have enough to discuss, you know, because when we now come, we cannot schedule it that 
we will be doing maybe two hours and we will look at different areas because we're going to, I'm going to be moderating. What are we going to do every party? I remember now when it is over, I'm going to go around and thank all, the, all of you who have worked so hard, the states, everything, you know, because people have worked hard for so hard. This will just be a situation where it's all talk, talk, talk. We need to see, talk, I need to learn. I want to learn as much as possible Sir, from you people. Thank you very much, Sir. You have to, have, you have to leave now because my neck is on the line. If you spend one more minute here, I might get fired. Uh, so please, thank you very much. Please Sir. don't we'll fire you. <laughs> Talk to but let me assure everybody. I thank all of you for this evening and everything. And please. Remain prayerful for our country. We have no other country except this one. Remain prayerful for the leaders and the politicians. That it touches them to do the right thing. Use the country's resources in where it will be productive. It touches them to obey the law, do the right things. That we cannot spend money wrongly the way we're going, just like we have just done, spend one billion dollars for election, and then 80% of it ends up in the court. We should be able to do it better. Spend money to do things in the right way, a more organized manner, and everything. Remain law abiding and be always, always, always say things and stand for what is right. It is important for us. If we all do it together, we will achieve. I know how dampened you are that this your effort did not come out the way you have wished. But remember, we are in a long distance race. We are fighting a battle with entrenched establishment. It is not going to be easy. You're going to even me in the coming months, I'm going to be facing all sorts of problems, allegations, blackmail, everything. No problem. Don't worry about it. Like I keep telling people, people will say, oh, you're going to be detained. You're going to be doing this. Whatever happens, I'll take it. All I can tell you is that I'll remain law abiding. I'll follow the rules, I'll do the right things. I will not in any way bring my country or you or anything to ridicule or do what is wrong in the country. We must do the right things. We must speak truth to power, whether they like it or not. We must do the right things because this is the only country we have and we must make it better for our children and for the next generation and pull people out of poverty. We must remove it from consumption to production and make it one of the great countries of the world. So I thank you people for all your sacrifice. Do not in any way feel dampened. Feel great because you are, you've been part of this greatness. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure having you on the platform. Hopefully, in two months' time, we'll be back here again. Uh, you address your people. Please uh, stay strong for us. Um, do not cower to them. And whenever you think you're in a tight corner, they have boxed you. Please speak out. The most important thing you should understand is that you have majority of Nigerians behind you. And what majority of us are not... We have you again in two months' time. Hope you keep to your words by then because we'll be disturbing you. And if you don't come, we'll be dragged you. Uh -huh. Thank you. And please, one more thing. Do not apologize on behalf of the obedience anymore. We are big enough to handle ourselves. Take care of yourself and your family. God bless you very, very much. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you, pleasure to have you. Thank, Thank you, you David. David. Do you have any parting words? All right, I think we might have your space running for the next couple of um, hours. We just have reactions from people on the platform. So you can leave. You can take your leave anytime you want. We we'll have, reactions, you. We'll have reactions from our people. Thank you very much, sir, for having you here. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. sir. God bless you. Thank you.
All right, guys. Um, that's that was Your Excellency, uh, from, um, Mr. Peter Obi himself. I uh, will be having reactions to the to the space as much as we can. Uh, probably next few minutes, next few hours. Um, we we'll allow people come and react. I'm just so so um, I'm just so uh, blown away because my DMs are a mess. I have over a thousand messages in my DMs right please now. Please check your I cannot... DM, please. Oh, you want to use don't send? So it's it's crazy, man. My DMs are my DMs are, are something else. So I'm just trying to sort it out. And please, guys, we have we have over over hundred and something speakers requesting the mic, and everybody cannot come up and speak. Um, but we're going to allow people come up as much as possible. As we can see, um, Peter has promised that it's going to be a by by monthly event. So hopefully. Uh, we keep it fresh again next time he comes back here and asks his questions and hopefully that the space crashing that affected us we lost over one hour 30 minutes to the whole space crashing him not able to come on space so uh i think i'm going to start with mr vince i'm sorry mr vince you were here off from the very beginning i could not speak to him uh i have to apologize to you personally for that i wish you asked him your questions but you see i'm um, how it is here so thank you sir uh let me open <clears throat> let me open the floor um I think I'll open the floor right now for people to come in and give reactions, comments, uh, whatever you think you have to say. Um, I think it is now the time for us to have this conversation going forward. And let me bring in my brother, my brother Ibrahim. Ibrahim, can you hear me? Good evening, sir. Ibrahim, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I just want to uh, bring it up. Good evening. I've just been listening. Uh, good evening, everyone, the co-host, David, Pals, all the men, uh, Baba Tunde, 